Welcome and happy International Women's Day. I'm your moderator for the evening, Henrietta Akintade. I am an epidemiologist, executive assistant to Women's Health First, and have worked with Morehouse School of Medicine as a clinical research coordinator. Um, I have the pleasure and honor to announce the special guests for tonight's presentation, which are Dr. Keba R. Green, who is a public health policy analyst, psychotherapist, independent consultant, and on the advisory board of Women's Health First. Uh, Dawn Anderson is a biologist, health marketing and communication specialist, and is on the executive board of Women's Health First. Next is Dr. Kalima abdul Kudus, the president and founder of the SAFE campaign, which is an NGO in special consultative status with the Economic and Social Council at the UN. And last, but certainly not least, will be Nahila Ayeva, public health educator, behavior health analyst, and the CEO as well as executive director of Women's Health First. We will take all questions at the end. So if you have a question, hold on to it. And I believe it'll be Dr. Green to kick off the presentation with defining International Women's Day and the outline. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Happy International Women's Day to all the mothers, sisters, aunts, grandmothers, ladies here and around the world. We are excited to welcome you here to International Women's Day with Women's Health First. What is International Women's Day? International Women's Day is a global day celebrating the social, economic, cultural, and political achievements of women. Origins in women's suffrage have evolved into a day of celebration and advancement of women's rights. And we know that it has been a long time coming and we continue to fight on the battlefield for our rights. How did International Women's Day begin? The first official International Women's Day was in 1975 when it was recognized by the United Nations, the UN. But its origins began earlier in 1908 when a women's right march in New York City saw 15,000 people advocating for better pay and voting rights. Are we still not fighting today? In and I fighting for those same rights. IWD was then commemorate, excuse me, commemorated in the United States on February 28, 1909, with countries like Austria, Denmark, Germany, and Switzerland joining in with us in 1911. In 1911, excuse me. And here we are today, still on the battlefield. And I, I want to say, keep going, keep fighting, and we will get to the end of the road. Thank you, ladies. Next, we have up Don, who will be discussing what is this year's theme. So hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this year's theme for the Campaign for International Women's Day for 2023 is Embrace Equity. And what I want to do here is actually define the difference between equity and equality. And a lot of times people use them interchangeably, but it's not the same. So let me try to paint this picture. We have a father who is six foot tall. We have a teenager who is five feet tall. And we have maybe a five-year-old who is possibly two feet tall. Everyone is at the parade. The father who is six feet tall can see the parade. But the teenager, he has a, a hard time seeing, you know, he's peering over the people that are in front of him. Um, he needs a little bit of help. He needs a little bit of help to see the people. But the boy, the infant, the one that's, what, five years old, he can't see anything but the back of the people who are in front of him. So equality would be, say, for example, if we had some milk cartons for all three of them to stand on, the six feet tall individual, the five feet tall individual, and the infant will each get a milk crate to stand on. Does the six feet tall man need it? No. But in this case, all individuals are treated equally, which is equality. Each one of them have a crate. So in this instance, when we started talking about equity, we can take the crate from the father who can already see the parade. 
the one that is five feet tall has one crate and now he can see the parade. But the infant who is five years old would use the other two crates so that he can gain the height to see over the people in front of him so that he can see the parade. So equality means that everyone gets the same thing, but equity is providing resources where everyone has the opportunity to at least start in the same place so that they can enjoy the same benefits in return. So equity is the theme for International Women's Day 2023. The theme by the UN for this year is digital, where we have innovation and technology for gender equality, gender equality. So we wanna make sure that women are entering the digital into technological space at the rates that the men are in or entering. So we want to explore the impact of the digital gender gap and want to close that space between the men and the women who are in this space. So we're talking about astronauts, for example. There are more male astronauts than female astronauts. There are more male engineers than female engineers. There are more men who are in the engineering, science, math space than there are females. And we want to talk about closing that gap between the men and the women. We want to empower the women in technology. We want to power empower the women in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Let's close that gap. Okay. So what is the significance of International Women's Day? For International Women's Day, there are several things that we want to do. We want to raise awareness about women's and girls' equality, not only in the country that we're in now, but globally and around the world. And that's going to take a lot of effort. We have to change the mentality and the mindsets of some of the countries that have an idea that maybe women are not important or as important as males or girls are not as important as boys. I read one article, sadly, there was a woman in India, she had twins, one boy, one girl. The boy she breastfed and the girl she allowed to starve to death because she believed that there wasn't enough milk in her to feed both babies. And if she had to risk the life of a child, then it would be the female child because she was deemed not as valuable as her boy child. Another thing that we would like to take a look at is equal job, equal pay. It's kind of sad that in 2023, the women still make significantly less than men make for the same job and the same work. It is deemed that the output of the men is greater than the woman and that the interruptions in terms of life cycle or milestones are greater for women than they are men. For example, pregnancy, having a child and having to raise children. So they feel that they're not, a lot of companies feel that they're not gonna get as much output or the quality of work as maybe a male can output or produce because of the milestones that women have in life. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we wanna do is lobby for accelerated gender equality. It's important that we lobby for our rights to be equal, to be seen as equal and to be given the same opportunities as men are given. It is understood that everyone is not created equal, that everybody doesn't have the same starting points. And for example, going back to my example of equity versus equality, let's say for example, children in school. There are some children in school who have tutors. They may have computers at home, laptops, internet, but there are others where the parents can't afford internet or they may not have laptops. And so they may not get their science projects or you know, their homework assignments done. Whereas the student who is equipped with these materials may be able to turn in his or her work while the student who doesn't have the resources 
you know, fails to turn in their work from home. But if we find opportunities, for example, Xfinity uh, in our area has a program where your internet would be $9.99 if you have a student in school and you can prove that you don't have the ability to pay full price for internet, then they will provide you with a $9.99 internet capability, which is a beautiful thing. Also, they also have the program where if you can't afford the $10, the $9.99, they have a program where if you show hardship, then they would even waive that fee to make sure that your child has the same opportunities as the other the children who do have internets in their home so that they can do their work. Lastly, we want to make sure that we fundraise for female focused charities because it takes money, unfortunately, in the world that we live in. Resources, it takes a budget in order to run these organizations. There are so many powerful things that we can do as women and there are so many programs that are out there that will help help gender inequality, that would give the equity that the women need to be able to catch up to the men by providing resources for these female-focused charities. So now I would like to turn the floor over to Dr. Abdul Kudus, who was talking about empowering women. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so very much for that formal introduction and for even inviting me to speak at such an event. I'm more than honored to participate in this happy International Women's Day, that I'm proud of you for what portion you have played in our world to make changes in positivity that I believe are place pleasing to our Lord, who is our creator and the purpose for why we strive so hard to do righteous deeds to begin with. Nobody has a gun to their head. We're, we're trying to do it from the bottom of our hearts to make our world a better place to live. As a woman in leadership, I asked to uh, take on or undertake the Empowering Women segment of this show to uh, talk to the girls from a more personal perspective because, of course, we see so much going on in our world uh, that is out of control. However, um, we can talk about that all day, but we need to really do something. And I like to use my testimony to be able to share why I'm doing what I'm doing. To empower women means to empower me and the daughters that I have, the three daughters that I have, by setting the example, not in telling people what to do, but actually being the thing that you are propagating. I empower women through the SAFE campaign as its president. I'm the president of the Safe Campaign NGO in special consultative status with the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations, New York, USA. Alternatively, I am also the vice president of the Dayemi Complex, Bangladesh, and also VP of the World Human Rights Service Council. Now, with those things, we offer opportunities for people to volunteer under safe campaign, whether they're in college and they want to go down a humanitarian uh, avenue for empowering women, helping women to improve. I'm not coming from a religious space when I say what I'm about to say, because there is uh, definite lines between men and women and what God has created for each of us to do. However, coming from the angle that the sister just explained, Sister Dawn, um, it's been a long time coming that Women have less salaries for the same position, uh, can do the same work. I was a technician, electronics technician for the military. And I was also in, in technological school where I got, got a degree. And I was told by the professor out of his mouth, you're a woman. This is a man business. You don't belong here and you won't pass this test. Well, all that did was fuel me fire. But I, now I'm really going to pass the test. And I'm going to go above and beyond because you said, that I couldn't because I was a woman. So I used to test. And when I gave him the final exam, the man stood up and shook my hand. He said, wow, <laughs> I'm proud of you. You did it. And I looked at him and I said, and I'm going to do more, inshallah, too. 
and I left that class and moved on with my life with six total degrees to a PhD, all of which led to the humanitarian piece that was my ultimate goal for helping by doing the work, not talking about it, but doing it to be an example to my sisters to see how I walk through it. Um, I'm looking at your slide and I would like to say to the women and girls, whatever is said to you about what you can't achieve, it's not impossible to achieve those things. I have walked into courthouses and enforced things personally. When you are sure of yourself and you know what you're doing is right, a bully doesn't have any power over you. The only power any bully has is your fear. So if you put aside your fear and implement certain policies yourself, which I've done, I don't wait for them to give me anything. I go take it. So I put it in, in place. I walk in and tell them what we are going to do. And then those things actually materialize. That's where the respect is really given. Um, we have to understand that, that if you own the, the fact that they see you as inferior, that's the air you give off and that's all you're going to get. You have to own that you are who you are, create those avenues for yourself and start businesses that actually do those things, open those doors for the young people to see the young sisters, welcome them in whether you have the money to pay them or not. You got them like I've done for free. The rewards are great. And I put them underneath my program of the NGO to actually empower them because the UN will respect that if you have an affiliation with an already established in good standing NGO and they are always asking us annually for additional programs. And every year I scout out the land looking for people who want to do that and guide them with no cost. Sister Nahila, I don't want to take up too much time. I want to leave myself for the Q&As for everybody on what I said. Thank you again, Dr. Abdul Kadus, for explaining how equity is involved in women's empowerment and women's empowerment overall. Now we will have our last presenter, Nahila Ayeva, on empowering women's health with uh, clean water. Thank you so much, uh, Arieta, and thank you, Dr. Bukudus. Don't understand. And uh, Dr. Green, thank you so much. This is a great opportunity for me to continue this uh, great presentation. What has been done so far in terms of uh, um, empowering women? One little thing, but more effective, very with a great significance, is uh, to provide clean water clean water in rural Africa. And uh, without further ado, I would like to you to watch those three videos that's gonna come in, the three minutes, uh, some of them two minutes, and then we can take a question after we finish those presentation and tell us what you think about the video and what is uh, what we need to do. Watch this up. <laughs> Les populations de Côte de Sahoué à 22 km de Ouagala, dans la commune Hao 4, ont bénéficié le vendredi 11 février d'un forage à eau potable. D'une profondeur de 120 mètres, ce forage est équipé d'un système solaire pour l'auto-alimentation du système de pompage et de huit dispositifs de lavage de mer. Il a été entièrement financé par l'ONG Women Health Tech Georgie basé aux États-Unis pour améliorer la condition de vie et de santé des populations de Côte de Sahoué et de Côte de
You want something to eat, baby? Thank you so much. Um, please mute yourself if you now okay. Thank you so much for taking a lot of your minutes to watch those videos. Very important about uh, sharing those videos because it talk about equity. So as I don't understand mentioned earlier during her presentation, very eloquent, amazing presentation, by the way, mashallah, she has a really make a point, try to give us the difference between equity and equality. In here in this video, it just show you what is equity it doesn't take so much to satisfy this woman as here we have a lot of water we drink we just run the pipe and then we have a water well provided african people right now those women in rural area with airplane is not equity if you have a two and you try to provide to them then it's equality but did they need it no at this present time, as we can see from these three video, three organizations, I think four, um, all of them try to put a smile on the face of a woman in the rural area. Yes, I will add chosen other video to include a lot of other uh, potentials that we have that we neglect in here. I didn't choose to do that, but we want to focus on this because it's International Women Day. And then when we focus on helping and bringing equity, we don't need much because all, other people don't need that much. Yeah, when it comes to equity, it's to provide the need. And in here is the basic need to really achieve that peace of mind and make somebody happy, as we just see. The dancing, one of the projects is uh, uh, our coordinator for Women Health First uh, Patrick Dupo, he's joining now from Togo, Africa today, is here. He's mm -hmm. expressed the joys that a woman, you know, as a bit during the inauguration, he said that he never seen this before. Though he's from Togo, he, he traveled to the village. 
he lived in a city. So he has to travel to the village to see that he never see that minor things like this, providing clean water from the well, can make somebody so happy. And he's so grateful to work and join Women Health First. So again, that's what we call equity, helping those people who are the most in the need and giving them what mm -hmm. they need. Yeah. So sisters and brothers, I would like to thank you again one more time and I would like to move on with uh, Dan Anderson, Dan Anderson to proceed with uh, this presentation and telling us about call of action. Dan Anderson? Thank you, Nahila Ayeba. I wanna thank you for leading the charge on this presentation today and leading the charge of the women of Kojusowe, Togo, on getting clean water to their village. Again, equity and equality. For my water, the only thing that I had to do is go to my refrigerator because it has a dispenser for water and ice cubes. I even have a choice of ice cubes or chipped ice. I just refill my water bottles with the filtered water and it's, it's so simple. My kitchen is not far from here. But for the women of Togo, they have to travel miles and miles and miles and share that water with animals and with mosquitoes. Of things that we take for granted on our day to day, one of the things that I found in West Africa was that malaria is pretty common in West Africa. So the lack of clean water and being forced to drink the water that you bathe in and you bathe in the water with the animals and you wash your clothes in the water that, that you are bathing in with the animals and drinking that same water, as you can imagine, causes health issues. And so one of the initiatives of Women's Health First is making sure that that equity of providing clean water, this is so critical for health and for the well being of the women in that village. We want to continue to do these efforts in West Africa, and we need your help. You can reach out to any nonprofit that you want that will actually help women's initiatives. But I really care about women's health first because then I get to see firsthand these women rejoicing, playing on turning, turning their buckets into drums and rejoicing and happy because now in order to get clean water, they actually have a central location where they can fill their buckets up, take them home so that they can not only cook their food, eat and drink, but wash themselves and their family. So we really need you to support, and there's so many ways that you can do it. You can volunteer. We have a number of opportunities where you can volunteer stateside or abroad. We would love for you to share resources. If you know a place that we can get resources to help nonprofits who are supporting women's initiatives, we would truly appreciate that. And that's just a matter of sharing. If you know anyone who can also contribute to the efforts, that would be that would be great. The fundraising efforts, we have a gala that will be coming up. We will announce the date so that we can continue all of the efforts for this community and a number of other communities. For the donation, y'all can collaborate on a donation. It doesn't have to be a single individual or family, but if you work for a corporation and you know that that corporation is giving donations, we would like to hear about that. You can also sponsor our event. We will be providing opportunities to make sure that your business is highlighted during our events and our galas. And corporate donors, for example, would be excellent in helping us with this initiative. So we ask you to support Clean Women, Clean Water Africa projects with us. I would love it. But if you find other programs that you feel that you want to support, that would be good too, because water is necessary for our health and our well being. That the Safe Campaign NGO is a program 
in primary supporting people of color who are marginalized by systemic disenfranchisement worldwide. We do cover those things that we mentioned here with even the water, though that's not my uh, specific forte. I understand the relationship between the clean water and the women that got to go fetch it, where they're vulnerable to getting sick, malaria, and things like that. And if your health is jacked up, everything else is as well. We are available to you anytime. If you need guidance and help and uh, learn about leadership and international trade and finance and how to fundraise for yourself realistically, not the old school fundraising. Times have changed. There's other things you have to do in order to get some funding. And I'd be happy to share anything. Anybody that knows me knows that if I find out something, I'm going to tell it to you so you can get ahead, inshallah. So I'm going to hand it back over to you, uh, Dawn, Sister yeah. Dawn and Sister Nahila. And if anybody has questions for me, I'll stick around. Thank you, uh, Dr. Abdul Kudus, thank you for coming. And I want to thank our honorable speakers again this evening. Thank you for joining this year. And we hope to see you next year. And the conversation doesn't end here. Uh, but I hope we all and you all have a good night. Good night. Thank you, Henrietta. Thank you. Thank you, so. thank you so much, Henrietta. Thank you. Thank all. you. Thank, thank you, Dr. Kalima. Thank, thank you, Nahila. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and thank you. Um, all of the participants. All the participants who have taken the day out today to really uh, join us. We really thank all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We will say good night for now. Arieta? Yes. Signing off. This is good night. Good night. Have a nice evening. Thank you.